okay so a pv diagram is given here uh, assume that uh, these uh, lines are parallel to the horizontal and uh, vertical axis mm. vertical axis is pressure and horizontal is uh, volume so for the entire cycle for one cycle you need to find the amount of heat rejected okay so could you try so 2 vp is correct so how do you know that it is heat mm. rejected how do you know that it is heat rejected not heat taken in how can we say that heat is rejected here you your answer numerically is correct i'm just asking mm. let's say the value is correct i think how did you get that so quickly i think we have done this sum before we did okay okay yeah there on all of the papers said ah okay so can can you justify that heat is actually rejected here what does the first law of thermodynamics say delta u is equal to q plus delta yeah delta u the change uh, in internal energy is the heat supplied to the system gas usually in thermodynamics we are worried about gas kept in a cylinder plus uh, you can say work done on gas okay mm. so uh, or uh, alternatively you can use uh, the change in internal energy is heat supplied q in minus work done by gas okay so whenever uh, work is done by the gas the system loses energy so uh, again these two you can use any of them it's it's a one and the same thing okay so if i'm like looking at work done on the gas if that is positive then work done by gas would be negative okay now here uh, because it is cyclic process okay and then i'm sure you are aware that the internal energy is a state function okay so if you start at an initial point and then come back to the same point the change in internal energy is zero. zero so if the change in internal energy is zero then that means the only thing here left is heat and then work done now if you look at the cyclic process uh from a to b there is no work done and then c to d there is no work done because they are isochoric processes right now from b to c the gas is expanding right you you mm. look at gas is expanding so if i take a look at b to c the work is done by the gas so you can say work is actually done by the gas because the gas is expanding so you can always imagine let's say for your system your system is uh, let's say you can always mentally imagine there is a cylinder uh, with a tight uh, piston and then inside you are gas trapped okay so this gas is your system okay so this is your system now if the volume is increasing so that means the piston is actually moving up okay if the piston is moving up i can visualize it as being pushed by the gas upwards okay so the gas molecules are hitting the piston and then they are uh, pushing the piston up right so when they are uh, pushing it up the force and the displacement are in the same direction okay so work done by the gas would be positive in that case so if i am looking at uh, a pv graph we know that okay the entire area would give me the work done okay so that is basically uh, pressure is 2p and the volume change is uh, 2v so we can say 2p I, i'm just trying to get into like some theoretical theoretical is slightly extra discussion uh, mm. 4p and then again when you go from d to a what is happening the volume is getting reduced at a lower pressure so this time the work is actually done on the gas 
okay it is getting compressed okay the piston is moving down the gas molecules are applying forces in the let's say on the piston in the upward direction so there is compression here now i can either say work done on gas is positive or i can just say that work done by gas is negative in this case so if i look at what is the pressure p i'll use it with a minus sign okay p into 2v so this becomes minus 2pv all right now if you look at the net work done net work done by gas overall okay so net work done by gas is 2pv so if i look at this okay so if i if i, if I look at this uh, idea if i look at this idea the internal energy is zero so that means uh, if the gas suppose heat is not supplied to the system suppose if heat is not supplied if the gas does work okay the gas is actually using the its own energy its own internal energy internal energy is like that uh, i think if you recall it is the translational kinetic energy of the molecules gas molecules mm. okay so let's suppose the gas does work without any external heat transfer so if it does work it is losing its energy you, you understand yeah. so if it loses its energy then what happens the kinetic energy of the gas molecules goes down if it goes down then the internal energy should actually go down right do you understand the internal energy mm. has to go down because the gas has done work and then you are going through a complete cycle so there is no change in internal energy ideally here the internal energy if there is no involvement of heat then the internal energy should actually go down you should go down but u is maintained right there is no change in internal energy that means what is heat rejected from the system or heat is absorbed by the system it is absorbed heat is absorbed you understand I, your numerical value is correct there is no doubt but heat is actually absorbed because you, you understand the conceptually part here yeah okay it's the same value but heat is the heat absorbed here it is actually q in which is 2 pv or you can say q out is also 2 pv okay but you have to understand that if i'm uh, using a sign convention then i would use it with a minus 2 pv matlab if i take q in as positive then q out okay mm. now uh, if heat is really rejected let's say suppose if heat is really rejected uh, how can i change the cycle matlab right now the cycle is clockwise so anti clockwise anti clockwise had the cycle been anti clockwise then the heat would have been uh, re rejected given out given out you understand because in that case what happens the work done on the gas would be more you you, you understand i know it's, it's a really simple problem uh, but i think these uh, see the first law of thermodynamics is a huge application and then it's very interesting but for us uh, i think conceptually we have to understand it from energy it's it's energy after all okay so on either side we are like balancing energy it's like energy accounting right like you are like sort of balancing the energy you are okay with the idea heat yeah yeah huh? okay okay so here uh, a gas is expanded from initial volume to final volume the expansion is isothermal expansion is isothermal uh, let's assume there are n moles of gas and the temperature okay. that is constant is uh, t kelvin okay so can you find the work done by gas 
Uh, so I'll repeat the question here. Uh, you have n moles of an ideal gas. Uh, it is expanded from initial volume to final volume. They are given. Uh, the expansion is isothermal. The temperature is constant at T Kelvin. Uh, you, you might know the result, but uh, if you don't know the result, you try to derive it and then give me the answer. What is the work done by gas in this case? See, uh, in this case, uh, I, I think you understand that uh, the pressure is changing. We know pressure into change in volume is work done. So what we do is we take an intermediate, uh, let's say, expansion. Okay, So let's say the, the volume here is V. And then the change in volume is dv. So here uh, we take some pressure and then we say, okay, if I'm taking this change in volume as very, very small, then this rectangle area of this rectangle would give me the work done by gas. So which is uh, p dv, right? So if I integrate this from initial volume to final volume, I should get the work done by gas. Now, in let's say ideal uh, conditions, you can always use PV is equal to NRT. So if I substitute the pressure, so what do I have NRT by V, which I'm writing it as dV by V. Now, number of moles, gas constant, it's an isothermal process, so temperature is constant. So I can pull them out. So I have uh, to integrate this from initial volume to final volume. So dV by V. So it's a very simple integral. So it's a natural log of V. So the work done in isothermal process is NRT, natural log of final volume by initial volume you understand mm. or if you sometimes okay so sometimes they might give you uh, instead of giving uh, the initial and final volume so they might give initial pressure and final pressure uh, but since it's, it is an isothermal process you know uh, product of pressure and volume is constant yeah. so i can say p initial and then v initial product of them is equal to P final and V final. So here you could rewrite this as NRT natural log of, I think they exchange places. Okay, so P initial by P final. P final. Okay, so just keep this in mind. I mean, I think the questions will be straightforwardly based mm -hmm. on this only. Hmm? You're okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, now. Do you understand the concept of molar uh, specific heat? It's the amount of heat required to increase the increase uh, one mole of an ideal gas. Temperature one of one mole Celsius. of an ideal gas by one degree Celsius or one degree Kelvin. Kelvin. Okay. So when it comes to gas, you can actually do this at uh, let's say well, do this in two ways one you can increase the temperature of the gas by keeping the pressure constant okay the other is uh, you can do that by keeping the volume constant okay so do you know anything about this do you recall anything uh, I, I know cp is equal to cv plus r Okay, so can you prove that? So I'll give you a few minutes. Okay, so here, uh, what we can do is let's look at the constant volume case. So molar specific heat capacity, the idea is uh, you're taking one mole of gas. Okay, so some ideal gas, you're taking one mole of ideal gas. Uh, the change in temperature 
is one Kelvin. Okay, so some delta T is one Kelvin or one degree Celsius. Okay. Now, when you heat a solid, the uh, let's say if m kg of a solid is heated and then its temperature is changed by delta T, uh, you know you get the heat supplied as uh, product of mass and then specific heat capacity and then change in temperature, m s delta T. It's the same thing here. Okay, so it's in a, mostly an experimental idea and then. The specific heat capacity, I think for these exam purposes, we somehow take them to be constant, but realistically speaking, uh, they do vary a little with temperature. So we don't have to go there, okay. But uh, when it comes to gases, they're slightly interesting. <laughs> they're interesting, I mean, both of them have their own interesting features, solids and gases, but uh, for gases, there are two molar specific heat capacities. Okay. So if I look at constant volume, what am I trying to do? Uh, the volume in this case, the volume of the gas is not changing. Okay. So you can mentally, suppose if you want to visualize mentally, you can say that maybe my cylinder is fixed, restricted. Okay. So maybe you uh, bring some nails and then uh, put nails here okay so put a nail here put a nail here and then punch nails here into the walls of the cylinder and then into the piston if you put nails okay then the gas is unable to expand because the piston is fixed in space mm -hmm. okay so in this case the work done by gas is clearly zero So if I'm looking at the change in internal energy, okay, it is simply the heat supplied. If you go by the first law of thermodynamics, mm. then I am saying, okay, I need only one mole. I mean, only one mole of gas I'm considering. And then instead of S for solids, we use CV into it's one Kelvin, but let's say I'll write it as Delta T. So I'm like changing the temperature by Delta T. So this is the internal energy change. Okay. Now, whereas when I do that for, uh, let's say the other situation at the constant pressure, I'm allowing the piston to move up. Okay. At some constant pressure. Okay. So the pressure is like say, okay, at constant pressure, I'm allowing to move up. You, you get the idea. Mm. So when I do that, I can say that uh, if I go with the uh, first law of thermodynamics, so this is heat supplied and then minus work done by gas. You understand? So what is really happening? I'm actually seeking the same change in temperature. Okay, so uh, this, this idea in both the cases, I'm seeking the same change in temperature. If I'm seeking the same change in temperature, internal energy is still same. Mm. Okay, it's just that if the gas does work, the temperature of the system will go down. So that means I need more supply of heat to maintain that temperature. You understand? So at constant pressure, when you expand, if you are trying to maintain the temperature or let's say if you are uh, looking at the same change in temperature, you would actually need more heat okay? because the gas is doing work. In the first case, gas was not doing work. So whatever heat you supply, the entire uh, heat goes into changing the temperature. So here, if I look at the change in uh, internal energy, it is still same. So the left hand side, I can still write it as CV into delta T. Again, I'm looking at only one mole. Now this heat, whatever heat I have supplied, I'm supplying it at constant pressure. So this is different. The right side heat is different from the left side heat. Now work done by gas. Okay. So if you take a tiny increment, I can write it as P delta V. Now this, I could write it as if I look at P delta V, I know because I'm looking at only one mole, maybe I can write this as PV is equal to NRT. So I can write this as R into delta T. 
right? And then what is heat supplied? I'm taking one mole and the specific heat capacity is Cp into delta T minus R into delta T. Now, if you look at both sides, your delta T you can forget. I can write Cp minus Cv is R. Do you understand? Are you able to follow this? Yeah. Okay, so again, this is very important because sometimes, see, in the exam, what they do is uh, they just sort of they ask some expressions. You know, the ratio of specific heats, gamma, is Cp by Cv. Sometimes they say, okay, pick one of the options where uh, Cv is expressed in terms of gamma and R. All you are trying to do is, okay, you divide this expression by uh, Cv. What do you get? Cp by Cv minus 1 is equal to R by Cv. So, you know, I can express Cv as uh, R by gamma minus 1. So, you can pick these options. But if you understand the, let's say, core equations, or let's say if you understand and remember core equations, you don't have to remember many other, uh, other uh, expressions. It's, it becomes actually unnecessary. You, you yeah. get the idea here? Yeah. But uh, the central idea here is when the gas is ex gas uh, is given some heat and then if you are seeking the same change in temperature, if you do it at constant volume, then you would need to supply lesser heat. Mm. But if you want the gas also to expand, if you want the gas to do work as well, then you would have to supply more heat. Yeah. Okay, so here, uh, let's say, right now, let us look at some process known as adiabatic process. Okay. I think you know about adiabatic process, right? Kind of, yeah. What is the idea of adiabatic process? That no uh, like internal no. energy is lost. No, 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 no. I mean, like, oh, there's no heat gained or like heat lost or work perfect, done. Or... Perfect, perfect. Okay, so there is no heat involvement. That's the adiabatic process. Okay, so now if a gas, uh, let's say n moles of an ideal gas goes from, uh, let's say, initial volume to final volume. Okay, now can you find the work done by gas here? Find the work done by gas. And you can use uh, the molar, uh, the ratio of uh, molar specific heats, gamma. You can express the answer in terms of gamma, n moles. You have rightly identified that, okay, so if I use the first law of thermodynamics, delta U is Q in minus work done by gas. This, this is something that you have rightly identified. Now, this is not there. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to work done by gas, uh, again, it is uh, P delta V only. So, I take at some pressure. I say the change in volume is dV. So, if I look at work done by gas, in this case, I'm looking at integral P dV. Now, how can I write, uh, let's say, uh, somehow I need to write, because pressure is changing, volume is changing. I cannot have both of them, okay, when I'm integrating. But you know that P into P initial or let's say P into V to the power gamma is some constant C for adiabatic process, right? Yeah. So all you have to do is substitute here. So I can write P as some constant divided by V raised to gamma. C is anyway constant. I can pull that out. 
Now I'm going to integrate it from V initial to V final. But instead of pulling C out, I'll leave it inside. Okay, so it's a constant. Now if you look at the integral, it's a simple integral. Hmm. Okay, so I have V to the power uh, minus gamma plus one by minus gamma plus one. Now C is also there. Then I will substitute my initial volume to final volume. Now this is what I will do when I am substituting initial and final volume. Okay. C is constant. So I can either substitute uh, when I'm substituting final volume, I will substitute final pressure and final volume. So C value will be P final into V final. And then I have anyway this V final into minus gamma plus one minus okay so minus when i'm substituting uh, the other guy i'll substitute p initial v initial into v initial raised to gamma plus one are you able to understand this yeah and then divide by minus gamma plus one now what this will give me is if i look at the volumes i think vol uh, V final into V final raised to minus gamma. So that becomes one. Mm. Okay. So your work done by gas, I'll write it here. Your work done by gas, maybe I'll erase this uh, stuff. Let me erase this. So the work done by gas. I can write as P final into V final minus P initial. initial into V initial by minus gamma plus one. Or I think you can, if you want to write gamma minus one, you can write P initial V initial minus P final V final by gamma. But maybe I would have, I think I made a mistake by not giving you the pressures. I think I should have given you because the answer can be expressed only in that. But suppose if I want to write in terms of temperature, I can also write this as NR into initial temperature minus final temperature by gamma minus one. So either of the expressions are okay. You understand? Mm. Okay. So maybe I made a mistake there. I should have given you initial and final pressures uh, so, or temperatures. I thought I, I had to derive the PV comma is equal to C. So achha, 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 achha. Oh, okay. You know how to derive that? No. <laughs> okay. I'll give. Okay. Good. Good question. So derive that. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, one thing I totally forgot yesterday. Zoom did not work. So yesterday, after this class, I remembered. I went into the old mode of saving files. I, I thought that because it was a problem solving. Uh, no, no, I, I thought problem solving, so you weren't recording. I don't know. What happened was I, I went into old self. So I was saving files. I'll send you the files. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, even for the other class also, I forgot. Okay, so change in internal energy is Q in minus work done by gas. Now this is not there. Okay, so heat supplied is not there. Now, if I am taking a temperature change as delta T, uh, you know, your delta U can always be written as N into CV into delta T. So that you can do. Now work done by gas. I don't know about this. No, see, this is what we discussed now when we talked about that, uh, uh, let's say specific heat uh, capacity at constant volume, constant pressure. We said if you are changing the temperature by delta T, whether you do it at constant pressure or constant volume, the internal energy changes N into CV into delta T. Because you are seeking okay. at the same temperature change, right? So you can always write that. Mm. 
okay n into cv okay. into delta d now when it comes to work done by gas it is like p let's say delta v if i take a tiny change now the issue here is uh, somehow i need to convert this into an integral let's say i mean to get an expression so i have everything temperature is there pressure is there volume is there but uh, mathematically we are looking at a method of uh, separation of variables right here so you want to keep one variables on the left hand side the other variables on the right hand side so that you can integrate and then get an expression so what we can do here is we can freely use that uh, pv is equal to nrt here so if i use pv is equal to nrt i can just write the right hand side as minus so this becomes like n r t by v into delta v you are with me so far now this if you look at it uh, helps us in separating the variables so i can forget about n so cv and r are anyway constant so i can write delta t by t is equal to minus r by cv into delta v by v so you're okay now yeah. if i push it to even smaller changes okay if i push it to even smaller changes this expression can be written as dt by t is equal to minus r by cv into dv by v so now i have separated my variables okay so then it is a matter of simple integration so you integrate from yeah so initial temperature let's say you take something and then you take the final temperature t final on this side and then you have initial volume and then final volume so this can be written as natural log of t final by t initial is equal to minus r by cv natural log of v final by v initial you with me yeah okay so you are okay so far yeah okay so now if i want to remove log what can i do i can let's say left hand side i have t final by t initial and the right hand side i can write v final by v initial and then this entire thing will be raised to the power of minus r by cv mm, okay right now again this pv is equal to nrt since we are dealing with ideal conditions whenever you want to use it you use it mm. right now that we want expression only in uh, pressure and volume let's say the initial expression that the temperature uh, because i have a ratio this i can write it as uh, p final into v final divided by p initial into v initial are you with me yeah, and this yeah. i'll try to flip it okay uh, maybe i'll try to flip and then write it so v initial by v final and then this becomes uh, let's say cv by r are you okay mm. then if v final comes to the left hand side so it is a v final raised to uh, it will be like 1 uh, plus cv by r so which is cv plus r by r oh no 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 what mistake i might be doing here mathematically can you see what i am doing here see i have flipped this so this only becomes plus this will not become ulta you understand oh oh okay 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 yeah so here i will get cv plus r by cv and the right hand side i have p initial into v initial raised to cv plus r by cv so now if you look at it this expression is cp by cv 
so i have p final into v final raised to gamma is equal to p initial into v initial raised to gamma so which uh, we normally write it as pv raised to gamma is come constant so okay. everything comes from that uh, uh, yeah well first law of thermodynamics is there at the same time your understanding of uh, the ratio of specific heats you're okay yeah yeah okay so there's a problem on board so try this say that again would be zero okay very good now why why would it be zero because if you calculate like the so area okay very good okay so if you look at the areas nice so if you this area and this area magnitude wise they are same mm. one i think you are going in a counter clockwise sense the other is a clockwise sense so if it goes counter clockwise work is done on the gas yeah counter clockwise okay so counter clockwise is work done on gas is positive if you do clockwise work done by gas is positive so overall that is zero very nice very good okay so try this okay so here uh, what you can do uh, i think we just have to use pv is equal to constant and then pv raised to gamma is constant so you start with pressure p okay and then expand isothermally uh, to volume to v okay so if i use uh, let's say isothermal what will happen to the pressure after the expansion if volume increases twice well the volume becomes uh, double let's say twice the pressure should go down by half yeah so can i say after isothermal the pressure is p by 2 right now for adiabatic you can just use pv p initial into v initial raised to gamma minus 1 sorry why am i saying gamma minus 1 gamma is equal to p final v final into gamma that's it and then p initial now i'm going to start with this after the isothermal process so that is p by 2 for me and then volume is 2v 2v and then this is gamma is given as 5 by 3 i want p final and then volume is given as 16 v raised to 5 by 3 you're okay then i think uh, p final would be uh, p by 2 into ha uh, so this becomes 1 by 8 raised to 5 by 3 now this is this would be 2 to the power 5 so p by 30 i think 64 p by 64 are you okay okay see uh, what we can do here is take some intermediate uh, position okay so let's say the volume is v there the pressure is p and the temperature is t okay now if i look at this uh, triangle it's a straight line process so ab is a straight line so what you can do is if i take the small triangle and the big triangle i can use the idea of similarity so i can write uh, the pressure th this leg how much is this this is like p minus p not okay this this one this this so p minus p not by this would be 3v not minus p so we are using uh, similarity and then this would be 2p not and then this entire thing is uh, 2v not you're okay so far mm. then 
I can write this as, uh, let's say if I manipulate this, P is equal to P naught, okay, uh, plus P naught by V naught into 3 V naught minus V. Now here, if I multiply by V on both sides, I maybe I'll try to manipulate this a bit and then do that. So P is equal to, I have P naught common. Okay. Uh, then what do I have? If P naught is common, I'll get one plus uh, three. So that is four. minus V by V naught. Am I okay better there? Mm. Now I'll try to multiply by V. So I have PV is equal to, so this becomes uh, P naught. Uh, v, I'll take it inside. Okay, so this is like a quadratic expression. So V square by V naught plus 4V. Now you know that this can be written as NRT, right? No. So now temperature, I'm writing it as a function of uh, volume, P naught by NR into, this is a quadratic expression, which uh, you know, it will, if the coefficient of V square is uh, negative, it will have maxima, right? No. So I can take its first order derivative DT by dv i can equate that to zero and then i know i'll get maxima there okay so what is no, that how, dt how by dv square by v naught minus v square by v naught uh, i multiplied both sides by v okay and then pv i can write it as nrt hmm. okay so now if i take dt by dv because this is just a quadratic expression uh, i know that i'll get maxima so at uh, wherever this uh, derivative is zero. So I'll have minus two V by V naught plus four equal to zero. So V happens to be, I think uh, this will be how much two V naught. So exactly at the middle, uh, I think this is taking place. So to get the maximum temperature, what do we do? I substitute here. Okay, so I can substitute here. I can substitute here. So mm -hmm. if V is 2V naught, this becomes what? 4V naught square. Mm -hmm. So this is minus 4V naught and this becomes 8V naught. 8V naught minus 4V naught. So the maximum temperature would be 4P naught V naught by NR. Are you okay with this? Mm. Yeah. Okay.